So Jamie Lee Curtis, Brendan Fraser, Michelle Yeoh, and now Josh Seftel, all four of them first time Academy Award nominees this year. I'm joined by a documentary film documentary filmmaker from Stranger at the Gate. Thanks for joining me, Josh. Thanks for having me. So for those who haven't seen Stranger at the Gate, what is it about? It's about a guy in Indiana. Who, he's a U.S. Marine. Uh, he comes back from his service abroad with PTSD and a deep, deep hatred toward Muslims. He decides that the best thing he can do is to bomb the local mosque in Muncie, Indiana and commit mass murder. So he's planning to do this and he ends up going to the mosque to do some reconnaissance. And when he comes face to face with the congregants of the mosque, people like Bibi and Saber Barami, who are Afghan refugees who founded the mosque. Uh, when he comes face to face with them and they greet him with kindness and compassion, uh, the U.S. Marine goes through a big change and ultimately ends up not only changing his mind, but becoming a member of the mosque. So it's a story with, with a sort of scary premise. It's a true story documentary. And it is a story that ends with, with a lot of hope and, and positivity. I watched it the other night and it was so reflective to see such a story about Indiana, which is where I am right now. It's where I'm born and raised and to see a film like this be on such a high scale now. So I appreciate you making that for all of us Hoosiers. Sure. it's. A, I mean, it was Muncie, Indiana is a very interesting place. And the people in this story who are all Muncie residents are I think just, you know, they're heroes, they're, they're an inspiration and the way that they handled the situation, the congregants of the mosque, the way they handled the situation and uh, used kindness and compassion and, and forgiveness. And then the way that the Marine Mac McKinney handled the situation where he, he was open to change and he did change. It's, it's a story of hope about you know, uh, to me, it's a, a microcosm of what our country could be if we could find a way to come together the way that these people in Indiana did. So how do you come across a story like this, not being from Indiana and making it your next documentary project? We um, we found a newspaper article and we, you know, just said, oh, my gosh, this story is unbelievable. And we immediately uh, reached out well, the to the, the people in the story, the to Mac McKinney, the Marine, and the to the um, Barami family, that it was the founders of the mosque. Other, and were, they were all very um, intrigued the, and interested so in being part of the project the because they knew in, in that the intention of, you know, of like making this film was to present a a story that would help help people to see a different way, that would address hate and um, show are, different ways that hate can uh, be conquered. Members. In this case, hate can be conquered by love. And, uh, you know, Martin Luther King said it uh, years ago that the only thing that can beat hate is love. And that's really the message of, of this film. So also part of this project, uh, Nobel Prize recipient Malala Yousafzai. What was it like working with her? She's amazing. I mean, she's also an inspiration. And uh, we thought about who would be the perfect messenger, the perfect ambassador for this story. And we made a list of people. And the first person at the top of our list was Malala. And we, we reached out to her a while ago and she loved the film and came on board. And since then she's been our champion. And she speaks about the film all over and she'll be she'll be with us at the Oscars to to celebrate. That's so exciting. I saw you brought her as your guest to the Hollywood luncheon and the crowd was just everyone's like, oh, Tom Cruise, all this. But everyone's no Malala for Stranger at the Gate. It was so cool to see. It was amazing. I mean, every every star wanted to have their picture taken with her. And because she's, you know, she's she's the real deal. You know, she's. I don't want to put down movie stars, but, um, you know, she has walked the walk and been through the fire and and has used her platform to create really good things in the world. And, and I think people really admire her for that. Definitely. 
And so even though this happened 14 years ago, it's very sad that it's still relevant today. What can a film like this do when all, we see all these gun violence and mass shootings across the country? I think this film is really about finding our shared humanity. When Bibi Barami, the, the hero of the film, when she finds out, even today, when she finds out that someone doesn't like Muslims or, or doesn't like her, the first thing she does is she invites them over to her house for dinner and tries to find a connection with them, tries to find sh that shared humanity that we all have. And to me, what this film is about is it's about us reclaiming that. It's about us starting to talk to each other again finding connections with people that we may not um, share, think we share that much in common with or that we may um, feel are very different from us. But this idea of trying to find shared humanity between us is, I think, a really powerful force. And I think it's something that could help us help society come together in a way. And that's that's what I think the uh, message of this film is. And with the message, the reception has been so great from the Oscar nomination to the grand prize winner at the Indie Shorts International Film Festival. Were you, I mean, not to say expecting it, but what was that reaction like to just get flooded with all these accolades? Well, winning at Indie Shorts, you know, that we won the grand jury prize. That was a big deal because Indie Shorts is an important film festival. And if you win there, it automatically qualifies you for the Oscar. So that was really the beginning of our journey in many ways, was when we won Indie Shorts, we knew that we had a chance to to make it to the Oscars. And many months later, here we are. So it really all started. This film was shot in Indiana. And then the journey of the film was kicked off in Indiana. And it was really, uh, it was really perfect. It's great to see that connection all coming back here to the Hoosier State. Do you still have a connection with BB, with Mac, or any of the other people in the film? Sure. Yes, we we travel together. We show the film together, and we do panels together. And BB and Mac will be at the Oscars with me. So, yeah, we we um we spend a lot of time together. We've become very good friends. We're really excited for the Oscars. Is there? Anyone you're looking forward to see or any categories you're hoping besides yours that you're rooting for secretly? Hmm. I've gotten to know the the people from Everything Everywhere All at Once, the directors and especially Daniel Kwan and uh, just seems like the greatest guy. I, I'm, I'm rooting for them. Um, I'm also rooting for Spielberg. Yeah, uh, he, he's been supportive of our film as well. And I'd, I'd love to see both of them come home with some wins on that night but you know when when people have asked me like who's the star you most want to meet uh i have to say i've already met them and it's malala mm -hmm. and she's going to be with me so i feel really lucky uh to be going to the oscars with malala we can't wait to see it we're hugely rooting for you here in indiana i'm sure across the country so best of luck and make sure you watch stranger at the gate you can see it on youtube's on new yorkers youtube channel thanks Great. Thanks, Trevor. I am so proud to be a part of the New Yorker's Stranger at the Gate. I hope it will help us see the humanity in everyone around us. My dad calls my mom the Mother Teresa of the Muslim community, and it's definitely true. It was a little scary. You know, he thought he was doing the right thing. He was at war with Muslims in his mind. That was the time I invited him over for dinner. He didn't know anything better. 